Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mike Chu, a physical therapist, certified dementia practitioner, and your alternative career coach. Welcome to our career healthcare podcasting show where we talk about different ways to find your alternative career and achieve both work and financial freedom. So visit our website, drmikechua.com or alternativehealthcarecareers.com for more information. Again, thank you for watching and listening. Welcome to our show. Be awesome, be great, be excellent, ACG. Have a great day and enjoy the show. Bye-bye. I think we are live in our Facebook group. Uh, good evening, good evening, good evening, Alternative Careers Group. This is Dr. Mike Chu again, physical therapist, certified dementia practitioner. And yes, I am your alternative career coach. And yes, we have a special guest today. I got my co host, the amazing Emma Sh- Dr. Emma Shapiro. And we've got, uh, what do you call this? Uh, winning Wednesday webinar. We have sp- Special guest today, where we ask people who are actually winning in this game. All right, let me stop the the thing so I could see my I could see the beautiful <laughs> uh, uh, people right now. I got Emma and Tanya here, and uh, basically we just wanted to interview different people who are actually winning in this game called Life L I F E. So again, we got Tanya. She is an occupational therapist. Am I correct? Uh, that is based in upstate New oh, York. Yeah. I have to second guess, yeah. right? Why? How come OTs are just awesome, right? How come OTs are just awesome? Because oh, yeah. so, O starts with awesome. Live, <laughs> gentlemen, Outstanding. Live. If you're watching on the replay, please comment replay. I see Mr. Elyasar Taya already watching, one of my good friends. He needs to be up here too and interview, be interviewed. Well, anyway, uh, Emma, uh, <laughs> could you welcome also our people in our group? Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm so excited everyone in the group to, uh, you know, listen to what Tanya has to say. She's an occupational therapist and she's created her own, uh, children's, uh, indoor playground and cafe. So Tanya, why don't you, uh, I'll hand off the mic to you and why don't you go ahead and share a little bit about yourself and then how you transitioned from being an occupational therapist to this alternative career. Yeah. So I uh, graduated in 2010. I took my first job um, at Upstate Medical University straight out of grad school. I spent most of my time on the neuroacute floor. I did some time on rehab. And I was also doing per diem at a nursing facility on the weekend. So I was working six days a week. um, And I did that for about two and a half years. um, Totally burnt out. Felt like a workhorse you know, productivity standards, lots of documentation. Um, So then I transitioned into pediatrics where I worked for a private clinic and I did home care, I did school-based, I did contracts, and I maintained my per diem job on the side. So I was still working six days a week. So I had the biggest caseload if I could possibly have. um, And I just, I liked it, but I didn't like the cancellations. And with peds, it's so unknown with your caseload. You know, you're discharging, or they're moving, or they're canceling, or they're sick. Um, And then I got pregnant with my daughter, and I wanted a little bit more flexibility, because that's what happens when you have babies, right? (laughs) So I transitioned to two days a week. Um, I was still doing pediatrics. And then I got pregnant again with my son very quickly, six months after I had my daughter. And I wanted more flexibility, so I actually took a teaching job at a local college. So I started off as an adjunct, and I taught developmental pediatrics, and that turned into a full-time gig. And I did that for about a year and a half, Um, but the commute was really long. Um, My husband and I both had long commutes with two little kids, so I wanted even more flexibility, even more freedom. And then that's when I started kind of researching doing my own thing. Uh, so originally, I was going to look into doing a pediatric practice, um, actually started to do that, and then decided I didn't want to just serve people who needed traditional OT, but I wanted to serve everybody. I wanted to serve the families in my community. So 
that's when I came up with and found the Play Cafe idea. So, which is basically an indoor playground. We do have a small coffee shop, and we offer enrichment classes. We offer birthday parties. We offer all sorts of good stuff, and we're adding on services all the time. So, yeah, so that's my story. That's awesome. Now, how did you learn how to do this? So, when I was kind of transitioning, I actually just started kind of looking around, Googling what kind of play-based business were out there. I had an idea of what I wanted to do, and I figured it probably existed. Um, I spoke to some other OTs who talked about play boutiques, um, which I guess are so I searching that, and then I came across this um, program called the Play Cafe Academy, and I joined it, and I learned how to do it, and um, it took me about a year, and I opened my doors. So, yeah. Awesome. And when did you when did you uh, officially open your doors, Tanya? We officially opened in October, and then we closed in March because of COVID, um, and then we're hoping to reopen at the end of this month. Our physical awesome. doors. We've been off doing virtual stuff, but yeah. So we're definitely awesome. making some as everyone else is, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh wow. That's amazing. That's so good. That's so good. I I like hearing your word. You were, you know, English is not my first language. So every time I hear a word that really resonates in my ear and obviously in my heart, and I try to write it and then listen to it and actually what do you call this in English? Devour and, and digest that word. You know what the word I heard from you probably two times, three times already? The word flexibility. Mm-hmm. I guess my next question is, are you flexible? No. <laughs> flexible? Are you flexible? <laughs> if, you, if you are watching right now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching live, obviously, please comment live. If you're watching on the replay, please comment replay. And the next question uh, uh, it's the next challenge for those people who are watching. Do you want to be flexible in life, both physically and work-wise? The only way for you to be able to be more flexible in your current situation is first if you have to change your mindset. Mm-hmm. And this is what Tanya did. She changed her mindset from being an employee to an employer from being a, a working as a workhorse to being somebody who's delegating the task. And that's what she's doing right now. She has changed her mindset. And because she wanted that freedom, she wanted that flexibility. Now she has it now. And a lot of us, you know, here in this group, Alternative Careers Group, we would talk about, I want to be flexible. I want to work from home. I want to do this. Guess what? When you work from home, you still have to fulfill an eight-hour job because you still have to t- trade time for money. But if you have your own business, you can delegate the, tr- the treatment. <laughs> you can delegate the, the task to some of your employee and you're earning money passively from that. And then you can do whatever you want. You can take care of your kids. She, Tanya can take care of her kids, take, you know, go out on a date with her, with her uh, husband or, or whatever. And that's our ultimate goal here to teach you how to start your own small little business. It doesn't have to be big. Like Tanya, Tanya probably has a very big, nice, fancy cafe, or you We're know, small. So, We're less than two thousand square feet. Two thousand square feet. That's already big for me. You know, that's <laughs> that's big. You know, it's a big deal. Uh, I only have a small twenty-five square foot office. <laughs> I'm standing up. Okay, let's do some evaluation. And like, I tell the patient, let's just do some sit to stand. Imagine that. <laughs> so. That's the goal. Thank you very much, Tanya, uh, because I wanted to reiterate that word flexibility. If you want flexibility in your life, change that mindset first and then start thinking, how can I do this and be be an employer, be my own boss and being the best that I can be? So thank you for pointing that out, Tanya. It's very much about mindset because I feel like in college, we don't we are trained to be employees in college. We're not trained to be business owners. So it's definitely a very huge, scary leap to go into entrepreneurship. But if you have that mindset and you know you're going to be successful, you just you take the leap and you do it. And you find a mentor or coach who's done it and they can show you the way. Um, so I 100% agree with that. And time is the one thing we can't give back. We can always make money. 
can always make money tomorrow. We can't get time back. So that's very much what I stand for. I love that. I love what you said. I love what you said. I forgot what you said already. <laughs> Well, no, I, I think, lady, if you're watching again, could you type in flexibility? Okay, <laughs> could you type in flexibility, ladies and gentlemen? I see, I want to just uh, give a special shout out to Christian. I know Christian is one of my Filip fellow Filipino, Bray Randall. I know Bray, what's going on, Bray? Erwin Norsua, one of my good friends in the Philippines. Uh, he's also one of the coaches there, Dr. Edmund Sultan. Dr. Edmund Sultan, he's a really good business owner in the Philippines. He owns uh, uh, what do you call this? Say uh, a review center in the Philippines. A very, very successful practice there. That's a business there. And, and Sarah Vos, thank you very much for watching. Uh, Emma. Oh, nothing. It sounds like we need to take this podcast international and start interviewing some international therapists. I know, right? Yeah, yeah. Share their stories. Um, but Tanya, let's get back, uh, back to sort of your journey to entrepreneurship. Um, so we talked about sort of like how did you find the resources. Um, tell us like some of the best things and then also some of the ch most challenging things about running your indoor playground and cafe. So one of the best things is when it's successful, it's on your shoulders. But one of the hardest things is, is if you fail at something, which I don't call it failing, I call it pivoting. Something doesn't work. We just try something different. But that's also on your shoulders. Um, and the one thing I definitely had to learn as a business owner is to delegate. Um, I know as therapists, we do everything, right? You have to delegate. The more structure you have in your business, the more flexibility you have because you have people who can follow your processes. So that was something I definitely had to educate myself in. We just don't get marketing. We don't get the business side when we're in traditional therapy school. So awesome. that part was definitely new to me. So that was a challenge. Um, I had, when I found my location, I had to do a lot of um, building. Uh, we did a build out. Um, so getting the right licenses, working with the health department because I have a small coffee shop, those kind of things. I had to research all that. Um, so if you're planning on doing something like this, I definitely, definitely recommend talking to somebody who's done it, who can lay it out for you, who's one step or 10 steps ahead of you because they always say the person ahead of you can see the potential long before you can see it. Yeah. So that's yep. kind of what I'm at doing now. I really want other therapists in this space. We are so uniquely qualified to do this owner, 100%. So we need more creative minds to make true difference, true impact. And I feel like in a traditional rehab setting, we don't get that opportunity like we do when we're on our own, when we call the shop. So. Awesome. I do that. I'm going to stop you really quickly, Tanya. Uh, you're, it's a little hard to hear you. Do you think you could come a little bit closer to the microphone? Or? Yeah, Tanya, you were frozen a little bit. Oh, and, uh, we could hear you, though. We could hear you. So even though you were frozen, we still got all the content. Yeah, okay. You were still flexible little... when you were frozen. <laughs> <laughs> but I just would like to reiterate what the Tanya was mentioning earlier. She mentioned about I was writing everything down. You see, I wrote, I wrote, I write okay. stuff. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you have to write it down, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Why? Because it becomes a reality when you're writing mm -hmm. it down. Why? Because when you hear it, you forget. When you see it, you remember. But when you're actually doing it, you're actually understanding it more. So I'm actually doing it. I want to learn from Tanya and, of, of course, from Emma. Emma teaches me all the time. No, so, that's not true. Mike is the pro. I want to shout out to Mike because he yeah. is so humble and always acknowledges everyone else. But he is just amazing, amazing speaker, amazing leader, and just like gives, gives, gives and shares. So I just have to like interject that because like always <laughs> you're always talking about everyone else and, and you, you're so humble. And my heart is, bless your little heart, according to my patients. My patient would say, bless your little heart, you little Filipino kid. <laughs> okay. So where was I? Uh, let's, let's go back to uh, uh, that uh, thing there. Stop in disturbing me, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what Tanya said is that we were trained to be an employee. We cannot, you cannot blame yourself, ladies and gentlemen. We were trained to be an employee. Why? Because the physical therapy profession, the occupational therapy profession, whether it's your PT, OT, or speech, or an assistant, or a therapist, 
we were trying to be techs. We were tech. We were a sub, uh, what you call this, a subcategory of the nursing profession. And now we're a doctoring profession. Even OTs, they have an OTD uh, program now. And now we're trying to develop ourselves. And we really need to get out there and start owning our business because we can operate as our own. And, and that's what I like about uh, uh, Tanya's uh, uh, mentoring program or whatever. She's going to start with this group. Because like what she said, you, you need to follow somebody who is actually doing it at least two steps above you, two steps before you. That way you can follow their footstep. If they're too far up there in the ladder, for example, for me, if I want to follow, uh, let's just say uh, somebody who owned Select Rehab. Do you think that Select Rehab is going to help me start my own rehab? No, because he's already far. I cannot see his steps. It, all the steps there are all gone. The <laughs> dust is gone. But if that person that you're following is like two or three steps forward you and you like whatever English you call that, five steps behind, you can still follow what she's doing. You can mimic that. And that's what we're trying to do here in Alternative Careers Group. We're doing it and you follow behind us. So you can follow the steps, the blueprint that we're trying to do. That's where we're trying to develop this. Uh, what do you call that program, Emma? Oh, like our coaches program? Yeah. Well, what's that? <laughs> the bundle thing? <laughs> oh, we just have a bunch of different. That's yeah. just why we have so many different the, programs. The, the business that we thing. Talk about. Yeah. Because we want to teach you how to start your own business, whether it's in therapy, whether it's uh, what do you call your business, Tanya? Tots for tots. The tot spot. What? The tot spot. Tot spot. Yeah. <laughs> the tot spot. Gosh, it could be a tattoo spot, tattoo parlor <laughs> plus kids playing there. The kids tattooing. No, just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the tot spot. So imagine that, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So. Well, I have a couple more questions, over. Tanya. Tanya. See, I really loved that you said that, that, you know, we can do so much more. I mean, that's the common theme. Like that's where Mike was going with this is that, is that really all the time in the group we're asked, like, I want to do more. I can do more. And this is why we have this podcast because he, he, these are all the illustrations of that. We can do more. We just have to think outside of the box and maybe, you know, shift a little bit. So you talked about that you thought that this was really perfect for therapists. Can you talk about maybe some of the skills that you've really used uh, during um, making this business? Absolutely. So, <laughs> with the pediatric OT, so I designed my entire play space by developmental play stage. So we cater to children six months to six years. So we start at sensory motor play and go all the way up to imaginative and growth motor. So I kind of have stations set up around the play area and they're, they're made for different ages and different stages. And parents are really, kids are sedentary these days and parents are really looking for opportunities to bring their kids somewhere where they can learn, where there's no screens, where they're safe and pretty much where the parents can relax. We cater a lot to parents. Oh. I mean, that's why we have a coffee shop included so that their children can play and they can relax to the latte. And they're the ones that have the, they're the ones that have the pocketbooks, right? in the wallet. So we got to cater to them. <laughs> yeah. That's hitting two birds in one stone. Yeah. Oh, well, awesome. God. Now, now, so, so you, you do a lot uh, occupational therapy wise. Now we always get a lot of like PTs, OTs, CODAs, PTAs, SLPs. So can anyone start this um, or who would you recommend best to start something like this? The wonderful thing about this business is anyone can do it. I think that therapists have a unique um, mindset or knowledge base that makes them really good for this type of business because we can do things that people that don't have our education and background, they can't really do. Like for right now, because I'm physically closed, I can still do virtual classes. I can still offer family wellness consulting for parents who are struggling with kiddos that have sensory processing disorder. I can still do those things where somebody else who doesn't have the therapist's background and education 
they might be completely closed right now and have no way to have an income coming in because of COVID. So I think we're uniquely made for businesses like this. Awesome. Awesome. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of like some other questions here. Um, so we talked a little bit about it. Do you want to talk about like how you designed your uh, playground at all? Like, did you design it, um, you know, with a specific intent in mind? So when I designed the playground, I wanted to make sure I hit like major milestones. So we have a soft motor sensory area for the little kids. So that's for about six months to two years, 18 months we let that in there. And then I have an entire village. Um, We call it Top Town. And it has a shop, it has a construction site, it has a farm, and it has a little cottage house. And that's for imaginative play for three and four or five-year-olds. We have a big gross motor structure. Uh, We have a fine motor wall. We have sensory bottles. We have puzzles. I love old school toys where the kid has to work harder than the toy does because (laughs) that's how they learn. So we have a dress up area. So we very much focus. uh, Yeah. So we very much focus on children engaging in purposeful play that's going to definitely promote and facilitate development. And parents love that. And that's definitely one of the things I market when I you know, advertise the top spot is that this is a place where your child can come, you can relax and your child engaged and they're learning and they're socializing. So, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now uh, I have a question about billing. Like, are you doing any sort of therapy billing or is it all sort of separate as more like a, a, like a gym daycare thing? So prior COVID, I wasn't doing any traditional OT. Um, since COVID hit and we had physically closed our doors, I recently got my professional liability insurance back so that I can start adding on more services for moms, really, for moms and for families. Um, but before that, we were just open to the community. So there was no traditional billing going on, which was amazing. I didn't deal with any sort of documentation insurance companies. So, yeah. Nice. So almost like a gym, sort of like a membership, yeah. just so the kids can come yeah. like play we like a gym. Classes. We do yoga, we do art, we have music class, uh, we host birthday parties. So, yeah. Very awesome. Very awesome. Um, well, is there any sort of like, what would be your best advice for someone potentially wanting to uh, do this? Um, my best advice would to definitely take a look at your community. Um, you definitely want an analysis. If there's other businesses similar to that, you're going you're gonna to have competition. Um, I find a gap. Find a gap in the market. So where I live, there's a lot of stuff for older kids, but there's not a lot of stuff for toddlers, um, four, five, and six-year-olds. So that's the market that I focus on because I saw the need. So whenever you create a business, you want to you want to be in a niche. So that's my niche. I saw the gap, I saw the opening, and then I I pounced and created a business. Very nice. Yeah, I agree with that. And and Mike can speak to that. You know, you really want to any sort of business you have, you want to find your unique voice. You know, Mike has done an amazing job finding his unique voice. He is the certified dementia practitioner. He is the dementia expert. We see him on highways. We see him on billboards. We see him all over the place. We can't stop seeing him. And so Found my yeah. unique voice being a Filipino, <laughs> Filipino accent voice of the Filipino people and, uh, you know, going to the Philippines and then talking to patients like this, interchanging the letter P and the letter F. We don't have a P and F. We, we changed it. Speaking of voices, we changed. So, for example, if you ask a coffee, we'll ask, do you want a coffee, please? A coffee. Be careful. You might slip on the floor. Something like that. <laughs> so that's my unique voice there. But, but kidding aside, I like what Emma and Tanya said. You have to find that niche. You have to find that need. If, you want, if you're serving everyone, guess what? You're not serving everybody. You cannot serve everybody. You have to find that specific niche, that specific audience in that way. You can actually, you know, uh, uh, serve that. If It's just like a basketball. You cannot shoot that ball if you don't know where the goal is. You may be shooting the goal, but if you're shooting on the wrong side, guess what? You're going to miss the point. 
You're going to lose the game. And to make sure you have that goal, I don't have a goal here. You know, you make sure you have a goal, shoot it. Yeah. And Tanya saw that goal there. She saw that specific niche, the need in that area. You find that need, you find that problem, and then find that solution. And that's what we're goal here. Emma's uh, uh, need is basically debt-free PT, you know, side hustle school and stuff like that. And that's her, that's her need there. She's providing that solution to there. And that's the goal of this, uh, of this program. Basically, we are going to teach you how to be a mentor. Tanya will be a mentor to you. Am I correct, Tanya? <laughs> yes. Okay. I hope you enjoyed the show. Check out our website at drmikechua.com or alternativehealthcarecareers.com for more information. Again, ACG, be awesome, be great, be excellent. Thank you and hope to see you on our next episode. Goodbye.